Hey everyone, I am really excited. Today we're doing a deep dive. We're in a studio. This is a garage studio, but as I said, you know, some of the greatest companies on the planet started in garages and this genius work by Dave, I'm super excited to introduce you to. Introduce you to him, let's go. So this piece is gonna go into Hotel Laguna? Yeah, so that's essentially the same uh, vibe. My, my process is collage. Let me yeah. come over here and show you. If you look closely, you can see everything in the piece is cut and assembled by hand. They're all, uh, it's traditional claws, a, a little bit untraditional, just my, my scale and process. I start in Photoshop, I get all my pieces. Well, I design it in Photoshop and then um, when I'm ready to make the analog piece, I spread all those layers out and I print them out on this big guy here, mm -hmm. that gives me a 36 inch print. So I print out all the pieces and then I cut everything up by hand and I stick it back together and seal it all with resin. So that's cool. sort of how they're made. Okay. Yeah. It, like and all the pieces, like the- Yep, like that, all the that, pieces. That's your whole, so, so, so really no paintbrush. The actual uh, idea behind, the main concept behind my art is repackaging what it already exists in the world to tell a new story. So almost all of it is found. Some of it is painted or augmented, augmented in Photoshop, um, or I photograph some of the, the things that I find, but I try to make everything, uh, I try to keep as close to that concept as possible mm -hmm. of repackaging the beauty that exists in the world. And I've met, done many different series, even different mediums, it's the same idea for all the work. Okay. This is cool, I mean, this is perfect. Were you filming that? <laughs> yeah, so what I'm doing with this series in particular, which is cool, it's the idea, the basic over, overlapping idea is manifesting beauty from the inside. What's on the inside manifests on the outside, but the, the series specifically, I'm taking old pinup illustrations where if you look at them, you look back to time, you I have like archives of them. So I'm looking through them and I'm starting to see all these poses. I'm like, oh, come on. You didn't like, you didn't actually ask this woman to do this, right? right. And so I'm just trying to take something that uh, was sort of had a negative uh, idea behind it and turn it something beautiful yeah. and positive and change and flip the script, change the message. Yeah. And so that, I think that's nice. As a man, it's nice to identify it. And I think for women, it's nice to, for them to see that, that positive flow in the right direction too. So it's win-win for everybody. And at the same time, we're recycling images from history that allow the viewer to see again, they were lost in time, which is kind of cool. And I sort of see myself as a curator of lost images. Is there a period in time that you really like are focused on? Yeah, if you look at most of these images, all the florals from the 1800s. Okay. They're, uh, when scientists, uh, they were artists at the time, they walked around the planet and they documented it for the first time. Some of the flowers I use in my pieces are the very first time a flower was printed in color in a book. Hmm. You know, so this is cool tie back to history. And so like in nature, there's no, like if you look at the astronauts or the divers, in nature, there's no wrong color combination. And I love that we, I, you can put these things all together and they, they have this beautiful color arrangement. But what's interesting is all these are created, these illustrations are created by different artists. So like the flowers, you're blending them all together and you're getting this, such a flavor coming out of the art because of the styles, the unique styles and the way that they're tied together. So you, I like that, that uh, I, I really like that about the art. You are the, an artist's artist. Yeah. <laughs> You're like using different artists' pieces. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I feel kind of honored to be able to showcase their art in a new way. And I mean, these images are lost in time. There's books and books, I have them of, you could cut the page out and put it right in your wall. They're so gorgeous. Yeah. And they're lost, like thousands of images tens of thousands of people will never see, right? Just because they're so old and they, they don't really make their way to the forefront. So this is an interesting way to curate them into a, a modern form. That's awesome. So you know? do, you, I mean, do you spend time searching for books of new imagery that maybe you've never seen? Or? I, I, yeah, I scour uh, online. I buy books whenever I see them. Um, yeah, it, you know, it just comes from everywhere, that stuff. But I'm always looking. So, and, but all the botanical stuff, it's all, old 1800s uh, and forward and for this piece actually this is just butterflies but the, the imagery is old I, I and this is a multimedia piece our multi or mixed media I should say yeah I've added paint 
acrylic paint. I colorized her with oils. I colorized the butterflies with oils to give it more a, a bit more flavor as well. With actual Paints. paintbrush? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so not digitally. So that's why it's a mixed medium. Yeah. Yeah. It has more, uh, and it's touched touch by hand. And it, yeah. And as you look at them, you'll see it's it's nice when pieces like this, you can't really tell when you stand back that they're collage. And it's cool because you can have this big presentation piece. Yeah. And then I say to you, oh, some people think, what is it? It's a painting or maybe it's a digital piece of art. I say, no, it's cut by hand. And so immediately this big piece becomes very intimate because you want to get close to it. Yeah. And you want to look at it and you want to see exactly where the hand cutting is and you know and this piece here is uh, another version of that but with this one what i'm doing is I'm, i've already added uh two layers of resin I'm about to add a third layer of resin so you you'll actually see the depth by the time i'm finished you'll start to see shadows being cast by the parts floating in the resin but here we're just building up the gold leaf the gold leaf will mostly be hidden but you'll just see like little pieces you see how it's kind of poking through here yes and you can almost start to see see that it's like raised against that and as the layers go down, you'll start to see more of that three-dimensional. So how um, many layers will this end up becoming? Maybe five or six. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what are you on now? Two. two? This is layer two. two. Okay. I'm about to do layer three. So you'll apply more and yep. then more resin yep. and then you'll apply more and yep. then more resin. This is more of just like a, a free, more of a free flowing. Uh, sometimes I have them very, very much designed mm -hmm. and my blueprint. Mm -hmm. And then other times I just will completely change it as I work and just have a free form to, to break away from that kind of, you know, a lot of times I feel like you pre-visualize, you make it, and then you just follow your plan, right? But it's nice to have things change along the way too. So these are example of two pieces that are the same, but they will look a lot different when they're done. Yeah. You know, sure. even though I followed the same format of where the butterflies go, they, they still ended up in different places. Some of them, some of them are not, but the gold changes it. and. It's just, uh, it's amazing. I mean, you could just work on one piece your entire life and change, it could be cha you know, change every time you do it. it no, so. that's amazing. My, my, actually, my youngest daughter would love this piece. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, there's been just... a lot, a lot of interest. I, I have multiple collectors right now trying to get uh, something from this series. And this particular piece is quite a hot target. How do you apply the resin? It's just a two-part epoxy, pour it, make sure your surface is level. Otherwise, everything slips off the side. Yeah. And uh, just on this table? Yeah. yeah you I lay put, it flat. You put I just get plastic. I put the plastic out. Yeah. And I'll, I'll level it and pour it. And it's, it's pretty easy, actually. People think it's it's difficult, but it's not. I mean, how, how do you spread it? Um, I mean, it, it's, it just, it's, it's probably rudimentary yeah. questions, well, but actually, like, I not. can't even. When you think about how did I spread uh, resin over this, yeah. it kind of boggles the mind a little bit. Yeah. So I'll spread it. And then I have a tool like, say, for the smaller pieces, like just a piece of wood with a nice straight edge, I'll just drag it around. Oh, okay. I use lots of gloves. It's like a troughing. Yeah. yeah, but for yeah. the big guys, and most people don't need this, unless they're like doing epoxy floors, I have a trowel. And I just drag it all around my piece. And it just lays flat. Yeah, it's self-leveling. So I just get it out to the corners and I have my gloves on and I smooth it out all around the edges and corners and it just sort of drips off. And it dries in uh, 24 hours or so. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then I, some, a lot of times I'll do a second coat to give it that really, unless I want to see texture on the piece. This piece isn't getting a second coat. It's, it's pretty pretty glassy. Yes. But um, So that piece is done. This piece is ready to go, yeah. Yeah. And so we're, we're going we're gonna to see this hanging in the hotel. In gonna, the lobby, yeah. yeah I'm going to be lobby. taking that other piece out and delivering it to its new home and putting this one in. And uh, was that, I'm just curious, you don't have to tell me exactly, but that it's a local buyer for that other piece? Newport, yeah. A Newport the collector was in Newport. It's Got somebody it. who was uh, at the hotel who saw it and fell in love with it. Cool. Yeah. 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 And now uh, working on a piece right now um, based on the diver. So that big diver, that's a three-dimensional three six by nine foot. I'm working on, actually, I just got another call for two. Both are probably at least six by nine feet. So there'll be big, huge pieces. It's funny, we're in this how, little, how big is this? This is uh, this is four feet wide by eighty tall, so it's four by seven. Seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's funny because you think this little garage is make my art in here. Yeah. And yes, I'm hitting the boundaries of what is actually possible. But you yeah. know, 
I've created so many eight foot by eight foot pieces and saw it like this. It's amazing. It's you can you can do a lot in a small space. That's crazy. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of the greatest companies on the planet started in garages like this. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Apple. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, but I just love that I can be in my my you know in the bedroom. I wake up early. I'm awake at four a.m. I always I'm an avid surfer. I love surfing. So before I hit my surf, I take my daughter to school. So I I get in here for two hours. I work in the morning, and it's on the other side of the house. Just a small, modest house, two bedroom. But this affords me a space where I can work and I can literally just fall out of bed into the studio or at 930 at night or 10 like last night. I had a, an idea. I was in here working and it's just not everybody. Some people need uh, the separation. Right. I work well with it being close because I'm always doing it. I'm always doing it and never doing it. I'm right. like the like a like like no schedule, but yeah, a slacker yeah, with what, what, pure intention. You yeah. know? <laughs> like I'll spend all my time all morning surfing. But I'm thinking while I'm doing that. And then I get here and it's going. But it's every day. I don't, I don't take Saturday off or I don't take Sunday. I do it every day. This is like the same routine. Yeah. Unless, of course, I have to be somewhere. But yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, like I said, no coincidences. This is called Deep Dive. These, these little video you know, segments that we're doing with local you know, artisans or restaurateurs or whatever business owners. Uh, we're calling it the deep dive, you know, these deep dives that we're Very doing, cool. but that, that's awesome. All right. So it, it is supposed to look like an eye, sort of, but it really, if you look at the space and the cosmos around it, yeah. it's, a, it's meant to be a, a, a porthole through time. Yeah. So it's cool because you're looking one, two, three. And when you put this piece up big in a room, it, it's, there's such a strong focal point in it. It draws you right in. One, two, three. Three is a pretty strong number. That's a very common number throughout all my work. Three, the number three. Across all society, across all religions, for some reason, the number three is, is uh, very common, mm -hmm. right? And here, it can be whatever you want it to be, but, you know, nature, science, technology, past, present, future, mind, body, soul, whatever. Yeah. You know, there, there are so many. Um, but it's cool because you're looking through, but then somehow there's some, you're deep diving in. But when you get through to the other side, there's something looking back at you as well. Yeah. Which I kind of like, you know? Uh, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> this is, this could have so much meaning, right? Like, yeah. No dumping. It's a like, statement uh, on uh, nature yeah. and the environment. Yeah. A light one, because most of my stuff is very happy and bright. Right. I like color. I like, you know, the dark streak running through central, that's okay. But I don't like this work to be too scary. Yeah. You know? I don't want to scare people. I want to feel good. That's the most common. No, it's it's feel good. It's, it's yeah, really good. yeah. I want to feel no, positive. No, I love the colors. It's interesting what you said about the the colors and how there's no wrong what, what wrong exactly? combination no of nature. Wrong, yeah, you look at plants out there and there's they can be every color, but there's they all work together. Yeah. So yeah, and this one, what are we what what are we calling this one? This one here, yeah, that's just part of my porthole series. Okay. That's an astronaut. I've done many different astronauts. The astronaut is probably one of my greatest hits to date. Um, I've sold so many different astronauts. They're, they're always different. The prints are, are the prints, but the originals, they may look similar, but when you put them together, you, you, you see the, the differences, the, the different flowers, different arrangements. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sort of my Andy Warhol soup can mm -hmm. in a way, because I... I Without fail, I'll sell uh, a million of those like every year. The print, prints for sure and originals. I, I sell originals all the time. But um, this is my newest works. These guys are ongoing. I always design new pieces. Um, the Flower Brain series is the one I'm working on. The Anatomy series is another one that I'm working on, which is a very cool series. This was the first piece I did. Um, I built another since then and sold it. Uh, what's going on here is that I get these old anatomy posters. They're the real anatomy posters from like the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And I actually end up using those as the base for the poster. So this actually is the, the actual poster. Yeah. For, and, and then I build over top of it. And it's kind of an, a base idea. They call, I call the series Replicon. And it's the idea that man has achieved immortality and he started creating robots or androids in his image. So it's this reference of the original garden where man was supposedly came from. Right. And you have the barcode that's sort of like a reference to his, uh, uh, you know, his maker, uh, man. 
And then you have the snakes and the apple from the story of Adam and Eve. Yep. And it's just sort of a, a interesting cautionary tale about humans and, and where we're going and where we, we may go. Uh, I, I'm a strong believer uh, that we're probably pretty close to being able to create something human, human-like and that we might actually be on the verge of cracking immortality. Some scientists, actually, some of the greatest minds of our time see it as a sickness that can be cured, mm. you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting conversation. Science fiction, uh, I love the uh, science uh, fiction ideas, science fiction ideas uh, wrapped into a lot of the art that I do, or, or some of it's pop inspired, but... Um, I, I like the gold tooth. He's got a gold, <laughs> he's got a gold tooth, yeah. So I have about maybe nine or 10 posters that I've uh, bought. I think I, I got them all here, but I'll just show one to you. This is the, the printing on these guys is just amazing. Here's one. So this is what they start out as. This one's a little, you know, they're printed on canvas. Yeah. And I love the way that these were illustrated. And just, I think just using the, the, the original poster is add something. So, you know, if you, if you like medical anatomy, which I love, you'll probably be drawn to the art, but you may and, like the and this is on it's it's on canvas canvas that's yeah, crazy. What like, usually where, do where do you find these well the first one i found was it wasn't actually that one it was the one that i sold um i saw it at the you know the dana point they have that uh vintage festival at the end of the summer yeah so not this one i guess they didn't do it last year Maybe it was the year before i saw one there and i asked them i said how much do you want for that and these are expensive, these posters, you know. I, I've managed to get, get some good price on these, but I think they wanted uh, five or 600 for the two posters. Mm -hmm. And one had pen on it too. It was like some kid had drawn on it. And uh, I thought to myself, well, I mean, if, if I, I'll buy them if, uh, but then I thought, well, I don't have anything. I really, I can't figure out what I want to do with them. So like, what am I just buy them? I guess I could collect them. I don't like to buy too much stuff. I'm not going to use it. So, I left, I went home, and it dawned on me what I wanted to do with them. And at that point, the f festival was over, and I couldn't find it. And I literally now was trying to scour what was available on the inter what worldwide internet, you know? Like, yeah. And I managed to find uh, the poster. By the time I was finished with the two that I bought, I ended up paying more than what they wanted at the show, obviously. Yeah. And so whenever I see them, I just buy them. Okay. Yeah. And this is a this is a series that's sort of like ongoing in the background, the anatomy stuff. I, I had no idea you could find these on canvas. Like that's crazy. That's how they were. Yeah, they yeah, were like just a, they're like the pull down, right? Like, these are from these are like how old are these? Some of them are like uh, over a hundred years. That's what I was gonna say. Like a uh, yeah, hundred years old. Like look at this. This one's gorgeous. Um, this one is sixty four. Yeah. Okay. This one isn't as old. This is an edition. Yeah. These the, the first one probably was. But look at the, the detail in this. In is, the, is this paper or is this? It's again, it's backed onto canvas. Oh, I'll actually, to, what to. I'll do when I make them is I'll pull the canvas off probably. I'll soak it and I'll probably just separate it. Oh, wow. That's what I did with uh, the, the second one I made. But look at the detail. I mean, it almost looks like it's raised. Yeah. Look yeah. at the, right? It's just so cool. How, how did they actually make this? It's some sort of a printing, like, like uh, a, just a just a regular their, their printing process at the time, and it's a famous medical company, the Deutsche Hygiene Group or Museum, German. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that name sounds German. Yeah, but yeah. I just have a bunch of these, and I, I'm really into anatomy. I always have been. I, well, I grew up in a in a laboratory. My father had a dental lab. Uh, okay. So as a kid, I was always around uh, artificial teeth. So all that, so I guess I, I come to realize this years later. I, it seems like I've always known it, but it took me a long time to, to realize what it was. And yeah. we're all like that, right? Yeah. We have stuff that we're like, and eh, that's whatever happened to you when you're like five to seven years old, that's going to be your thing. Formative years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is something like that no one would really think about. Like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And as a matter yeah. of fact, honestly, as I, when I first looked, now I can't unsee it. Yeah. But when I first looked at it, I actually didn't really see uh, maybe it's a little bit of the glare too, but yeah, I didn't exactly. actually see that the anatomy thing. But yeah. now that when you once you start looking at it, it's like very cool. Yeah, you can see all the parts. There's a little robot, little story, <laughs> lifesaver, the whole story. Yeah, yeah. Some of the ideas are are kind of funny or yeah, humorous. Eminem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's cool stuff, man. I mean, this is like, yeah, I could see how. I mean, you could sit around and really like just look deep into this stuff and yeah i just have lots of fun with it it's 
making art just suits me, you know, and, and who I am. I'm sure like you, like in real estate, it's a passion for you. And, and you know, you look at a house or you look at the possibilities when you're coming into a house, it's, you know, wide open for you and, and, and it speaks to you and you do well because of that, right? You know, it's interesting. So, I, so the first almost 25, 30 years of my life, I was a numbers guy. I worked for big banks and stuff, uh-huh. but I've always been, I'm an Aquarius, I've always been a little bit like, creative curious. Yeah. Um, but as I mentioned to you, my daughter has like this crazy natural ability. I cannot even do like a, you know, like a stick figure. Yeah. Um, but now moving into real estate, I've found that I'm obsessed with design, like yeah. and, uh, interior design and, sure. I, and, and architecture. Um, That's something we share in common. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love, yeah, I love, uh, I mean, you know, and like where I do a lot of business, the architecture is very similar. It's all Tuscan or Mediterranean sure. or whatever. Yeah. But uh, when I can see like here at the Strands, like some of the new modern builds that yeah. are going on and stuff, like really cool. And it's exciting. It's, it's exciting to see what the possibilities and the passion drives it all. And it's just important for people to find the thing that, that speaks to them like that in life, right? Yeah. You end up doing things. I mean, I, I was a commercial photographer for most of my life, although I wanted to do that and I did well at that. It was never uh, as organic as creating art is. I mean, just in terms of creating it, making it, selling it, all the parts of it happen way easier for me. Like when I was shooting, I say it like this, when I was shooting, it was like I was getting into a pool of mud. And although I could make it to the other side, I had to claw and fight for every single inch that I got. And I was tired when I got to the other side. When I started doing art, that pool was water. I got in and I swam to the other side, swam back. And every time I did, I got stronger. Just kept going, you know? So it's like, if we can all find the thing that clicks for us, the world would be a lot, we'd be a lot happier yeah, as humans, yeah. right? No, I mean, I would say, yeah, the majority of the people are out there clawing through mud. Yeah. That's such a great analogy. I never really thought of that. I, started, I, I just now started thinking like, God, I'm in mud. Like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you know what? Honestly, like this to me, like the stuff that I'm doing now creatively, like, yeah. you know, being just being out in front of people, talking to people. And then, you know, like what you just yeah. said is. True. Like, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, you know, it. if you compare it to when you were doing numbers, maybe that's your your mud. That, that was a lot of, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean now it's, 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 it's not quite as thick of mud. It's, yeah. it's like a, you know, it's like a thin mud. It's, you know? yeah, it's yeah. loosening yeah. up. Anyway. I mean, some people it takes, yeah, I mean, I'm 51 years old. It's some people it takes a while until they, you know. Well, it hasn't aged you. You obviously aren't that stressed. You oh. look good. You look like you're like, thank you, thank you looks you. young. You thank look you, young. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, well, I just cut my hair. It was long not quite as long as yours, but it oh, was, uh, yeah. You so. had the COVID hair? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just have. Let it go. I think yeah. I moved here from Canada three years ago. When I got here, people asked me if I was in the military because my hair was so short. Oh, really? But well, This uh, is three years of... Uh, California just yeah, made me yeah. do it. Well, it's less than three years. I've cut it. Uh, I, I kept it short for the first while, and then I started surfing, and that was it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> It just was that like you, you moved here and hadn't been, hadn't been surfing before? No. And then I, caught, caught the bug. I got, I got so, so bad. Yeah. So bad. I mean, I, I just can't start the day unless I surf. It's, I mean, it's, it's changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. It changed my I, life. I, I just, I could, you know, I, I love it as much as I love making art. I, the crazy part is I, I actually really love water and the ocean. Yeah. I'm petrified of sharks. <laughs> and I know, I know everyone will say, oh, there's no, or the they statistics don't mess with here. Yeah, there's yeah. like literally a long border has never been killed by a shark in California, in Southern California. And like, well, up there in Santa Cruz, that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah here, the white, great whites don't go for humans. Yeah. There's sometimes there's a mistaken identity, like the woman who got chomped on yeah. down at San Onofre, but she was actually snorkeling. She wasn't even surfing. Oh, see, they that, see the big that board. Was her, that was her first problem. <laughs> yeah, but they have like some devices that you could use these days if you're really afraid, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's it's, no reason to be. It's, it's, no, no it's also, be. you know, I I, uh, I think I have, uh, you know, besides being a workaholic, like I have, you know, the kids and stuff, I don't know. Yeah. It's an excuse. I, I, I know no, all my no. friends, because I live in Laguna, everyone surfs and yeah. all, all the dads are like, dude, you don't surf? Like. Yeah, I know. I, I guess know. I shame. Probably, yeah. It's like it's like me. People ask me if I if I play hockey or if I watch hockey, oh, and it's like shame, shamefully I say no. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because I'm, I'm Canadian for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, I mean, you live in the perfect place. I mean, you, you know, it takes you five minutes to get in the water. Yeah. It's, I'm, well, I go to see, that's my local San, uh, old man San Ofre, so I'm down there, ten minutes down the road and ten minutes back, and you know, this neighborhood is full of legends 
and up up and coming legends. Oh really? Yeah. Well, all of Southern California. Yeah, but yeah. there's so many especially here shapers, old school surfers, or people who connect to the surf uh, world who live right here. I'm somewhat. Someone always tells me, oh yeah, that guy lives there, that guy lives there. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool though. Yeah, you're It's in the totally cool. Well, this- I mean, you know, coming from Canada, you know, when you live somewhere else, you hear the lore of some place and uh, it's, it grows in your mind something bigger than, you know, you just, oh yeah, that's whoever, Tony Hawk, he lives right there, like whatever. Did you hear about Tony Hawk? No, what happened? I guess he broke his foot or leg or something. They're saying he's not gonna be able to skate again. <gasps> yeah, really? my wife told me yesterday, I was like, no, cause you know. He I, had a good I, run. Oh man, are you kidding? <laughs> he broke his foot I and mean, that's it. four decades? Yeah. Like what? Yeah, and uh, he's a, a, a real heavyweight. I'm sure he'll come back. You know how many times have people said, you know, oh, they'll never come back and they you come just back. Just tell a winner that they can't yeah, do right? it. Yeah, yeah no, so he's, wrong. A, he's, a, he's a winner, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he knows how, his, his greatest, uh, I think what's kept him in the game so long is that he knows how to fall. Mm, yeah. All great athletes seem to know how to fall, right? Yeah. Especially skateboarding, because I used to skateboard. I broke my arm. I hurt myself. I didn't really fall well. I never fell well. I've seen him on ramps where I'm like, that, you know, he's going to fly off the side and he's going to, anybody else would have been probably dead. Right. Somehow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had a broken pinky. You right. Know? Yeah. He's just a phew. Just tumbles, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very cool. Um, so it's in my eyesight, and I have to ask, what is? Tell me about the hand grenades. Oh yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hold on, let me get a piece to show you where it started. Yeah, yeah. Give me one sec. Sure, sure. Yeah, the grenades are where it's where everything started in terms of fine art for me. Oops. This is cool. He did a. Show uh, them these. Um, he did a board too. They fell over and got really scratched, cool. didn't they? Oh well. Uh, my okay. daughter is gonna love this stuff. So I, okay, let me get over here so you can hear me and all that. Yeah. So these pieces are just sample sizes. The, the, the actual pieces I make are 40 by 40 inches. They're big and they're heavy. And is, they're that, inch is, thick. That, is that like that size? Yeah, uh, that's 36. It's pretty much, pretty, that's bigger than that pretty, actually. Pretty, pretty close, yeah. And they're inch thick plexi. So they're big and they're heavy. So it's from a series called Fabergé Grenades. <laughs> the beast. Dog, yeah. oh. Fabergé um, grenades, I get it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, Fabergé yeah. eggs, if you know who Carl yeah. Fabergé was, he yeah. made the Fabergé eggs. Um, and they're more for the grenade. Fabergé eggs, so priceless and delicate, you wouldn't want to hold it. A grenade, a grenade's of all time destructive, you wouldn't want to hold it. Yeah. That's very cool, all on its own, that's enough for a story for this thing. Yeah. But that's just the beginning of it. Where, this, the, the, this thing is completely steeped in history, it's so cool. Carl Fabergé made the first egg in around 1870, somewhere around there. He, he ended up making 50 some odd eggs. I don't know uh, exactly how many, but there's all sorts of crazy stories of lost eggs, found eggs. Some guy found one at an auction. He, was, he bought it for 14 grand. He's gonna melt it for the gold. It turned out to be worth 30 million bucks. <laughs> cool stuff. But what's even more cool is the eggs a symbol of life, right? He makes this egg. When World War I starts at the beginning of 1914, they turn his jewelry factory into a munitions facility. He mm. ends up making over six million grenades mm. at the beginning of World War I. The egg so there's the grenade. This, there's this. <laughs> Life and death. Yeah, and yeah. so that whole story is wrapped up in this series. There's a, uh, about 15 pieces, all, di- all the different designs of Fabergé, the main designs of the grenade. Of, of like the original designs of the Fabergé That eggs? have been yeah. composited. Yeah. And, and this and, is and another- different types of grenades or just this? Th- like- uh, I ha- yes, I have a few different types of grenades. Um, uh, and what's interesting about the way that they're finished is it's when these big pieces are, it, it's like you're staying behind the safety glass, mm. right? So conceptually, there's a couple of cool things happening here. This led me to a couple of other series of uh, grenades. I did a series of bone china grenades or grenades made from, has an interesting story as well. The Japanese used, they made their grenades as ceramic. At the end of World War II, they didn't have steel. So they designed a grenade no pin, just made from ceramic. You take it, you throw it, and when it broke, it would detonate and be full of metal filings and all sorts of stuff. Um, but what's interesting about that is who made the grenades? The most prestigious 4,000-year-old ceramics companies who were, the, who were pressed into service to do those grenades, like Fabergé. And it sort of got me thinking about who makes weapons and, and you know, you just think, oh yeah, the military has this place, they go make the grenades or they go make whatever, but it's just, you know, the titans of industry are the ones who, who do get the contracts to do these things. Why and how and there's some interesting ideas. So there were a few different series of grenades that spawned from this that started to examine those ideas. And 
It's just a kind of a cool device, right? Yeah. Inter- interesting device, very simple device, Yeah. but not simple at all. I mean, it's destructive. <laughs> Whatever it does after <laughs> the sure. pins pull, right? Yeah. So there's some, some interesting things happening there. That's it. And again, this series, um, like I said before with that, here's a perfect example that's not collage where I've taken the beauty that exists in the world and I've repackaged it and told a new story with it. Yeah. And an interesting story about the person who made it, actually, in this one. Is this something that you do on uh, Photoshop? I, f- I photograph the grenade uh-huh. on a background. Uh-huh. And then I take the, the Fabergé from pictures from books or wherever I find them, and I composite it together. Yeah. So it's a, it is a digital photo. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then printed on... And then I print it. Uh, it's printed and mounted. So the, the, the latest ones are, yeah, they're just, uh, there's like a double-sided adhesive. Yeah. And so they're mounted and printed. And I do archival prints as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what those are. You can produce all that in here. These things, I send them out because um, the the way that these ones are made, they, they're they different. There's only one manufacturer in all of uh, North America who makes what is called a diasec. This is like nerdy stuff for yes. people who are really into m- museum quality uh, that are guaranteed to have, buy something that's gonna last them a lifetime. Um, most of these prints, like this one actually is made with a, just a double-side adhesive. They put the print, they put the uh, adhesive and the print, they squish this down and seal it to the back, and then they put a backing on it. But the ones that I have made, my big ones, and they're, they're very expensive to make, they're done with uh, a silicone. So instead of adhesive, it's silicone that's pushed through. Mm-hmm. But that's the original way that it was done in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And there's with this stuff, you don't necessarily have the, the numbers to, to prove how long it will last. Although I've done bigger ones and I've had them fail, um, doesn't mean they all, well, they will fail, but the silicon. By failing, um, you mean like peeling off, or yeah, they start to bubble, peel. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean they will, but with that silicone, they have pieces that were made in the '60s, and they are, they have faded less than an archival print from the same date. Hmm. So you have numbers over 60, 70 years now, where you can see uh, how well they're going to last, and that's the one I make. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm into. You know, with it, whatever I create, and that's probably, you know, when you anything you do, you want to make it the best it can be. Yeah. And that means hopefully it doesn't fail. Yeah. yeah. But I'm experimental with my process. Some things fail. It's just a matter of, you know, how you deal with a failure. Yeah. yeah. What you do when you have the failure. Uh, dude, this is like mind blowing. So I, I'm trying to wrap my head around if that, where the questions could go, but I'm super impressed. I have yeah. to say, yeah, I love the work. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, I'm sure we could probably sit here and talk, go deep in. I talk more deep about it. that's why I, yeah, I talk about. It. I love talking about art. Yeah, All things art. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. How many pieces a year do you create? <sighs> Actually, I don't even know. Uh, it's like hundreds every, or yeah, uh, well, including prints. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. I have the jury's out on that. I have to. There's a piece being built every week. So easily 52, but yeah, then there's, there's prints and all sorts of other stuff. There's yeah. lots, there's yeah. lots being built. Yeah. If you, if you include all the reproductions and prints and stuff like that, yeah, then the numbers so, will but, go. But, but original, go. like big, big format, original stuff. Like I'd yeah, have to get like, back to you on that. Yeah. A, a few dozen. Yeah. A few dozen, probably less than a hundred. Yeah. Probably yeah. Less yeah. Than 100. I mean, I doesn't, I'm just curious more than anything. It's just, you know, how many of your pieces are out there just, you know, it's been growing. Uh, so that trajectory is on like in the, yesterday I had, I have four requests for large pieces mm-hmm. yesterday. Will all those close? Maybe mm-hmm. we've closed one today. Like commission pieces, commission yeah. pieces. And then we have, so California has been very good to me. Good. Yeah. Good. Since I've landed here, my career trajectory has just been going in the right direction and I mean, I, I don't really feel like I need much. I, it really, it's about supporting your family and, and looking after. But for me, it's really just about making bigger and better projects. Yeah, I'm sort of turning my uh, my attention now with the hotel and with these newer projects. I'm trying to turn my attention to public art. Okay, that's sort of the next arena I really want to kind of conquer, because then I get to play in a much bigger arena, bigger projects, bigger budgets. And is that, more like about, is that like sides like of maybe buildings? a sculpture uh, okay. made for the city or yeah outside or yeah. inside but in public places got it 
where it would have a legacy. Right. And that's what art is, you know, art's legacy. Every piece that it goes into collector's home, and that's why I want it to last. Mm -hmm. It's because a piece of me lives there and will live on beyond my life. Right. And I think, well, humans, I mean, as parents, that's the greatest legacy we can leave. Yeah. You know, children that with memories that will carry on for them. But in our professional lives, I think we want legacy as well, right? Yeah. We want yeah. to be remembered. I don't know, maybe that's too, a very egotistical thing. I don't know. This video is going to live on for, you know, as, Just, long, as long as there's the internet. <laughs> put it into the cloud. I like as it. As long as there's a I cloud, like we'll have... Listen, I think this is cool stuff, really cool stuff. Um, I, I appreciate you spending so much no, time. And, I'm you know, I would to. really love to, you know, see... I'd love to bring my daughter because... Bring her by. As I said, uh, you know, natural talent, and it's not just you know. Some parents are like, "Oh, my kid's so beautiful," and then you look, and you're like, <laughs> "You're like, <laughs> the eye to, of the to holder. you, to you, they're beautiful." <laughs> no, but she's uh, even her art teacher was like, yeah. "She's just so naturally like when yeah. you teach her anything, she just you know free it's hands in, it." And yeah, it's important to hone the uh, conceptual mind, you know, and the, the natural talent that's fantastic. But it's the it's like taking that and making something cool with it. Yeah. Not just drawing something cool. Yeah. Making something cool, you know? Yeah. That has an idea. Because you know, sometimes you look at it and you're like, what the fuck is that? Part of my language. No, it's fine. Uh, but it, it looks kind of like, ah, it's not your taste. But then you get the, the what the intention was. Right. And pff, yeah. you're like well, instantly you, you're too, You have to open your mind to it, right? Yeah. I, I mean, again, like this one. I mean, you know, if you just pass by it, if it was on the wall at the hotel. You you might, you might not really see much of it. You know, you'll see the colors. I mean, obviously, yeah. unless you're colorblind, yeah. like that's going to draw your attention. Totally. But then when you really start to like, there's a lot of art. Think. There's a lot of art. This, this is an example of it too, where there's heavy concepts. No, this and is a real heavy concept, like yeah. the, the 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 life and death component of it. Yeah, and I've had people uh, say, "I would never put a grenade in my house." So they listen to the story first, right? And they hear the story, and they go from being uh, against it to for it, you yeah, know? Yeah, well, because you look at a grenade, you automatically think death, right? Yeah. You're thinking, this is destruction, yeah, well, I'm took against something. war, I'm against, yeah. you know. And it's gratuitous when you see it like that. It's like, oh, he just took a grenade because he thought it looked cool because people think it's cool grenades, yeah. and he made it all fancy. Yeah. But it's more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, I, I, I completely missed the whole concept of the egg and it's life, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right? And it's yeah. fragile. Very fragile, yeah. Like life, it's fragile, yeah. the egg. So there's just so many cool, you know, you know, this is a kind of a crazy offshoot, but my wife uh, in high school had a party and someone stole out of her mom's vitrine a, a Fabergé egg. And it, obviously it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a million dollar Fabergé, but um, it was but expensive. It was, it was made by Fabergé. Uh, yeah. It was made by the house of Fabergé. It wasn't one of Carl's correct, creations. Correct. No, but it was expensive, you yeah. know, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. it was gone. Yeah. And when her parents came home, she was in trouble. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's kind of funny. That's I, I'm going to love to tell her this. I'm going to take a photo of that. Oh, for hey, sure. Do you have all this stuff on your website? Like, how do, how do people find well, you? Uh, Instagram is, is a great way to find me. Okay. Uh, at CrowofBlit1. Um, because you can see the daily, what's happening daily, the process, the, uh, there's time-lapse videos, there's all sorts of, it, it gives you a snapshot. And then you send me a message on Instagram, that's an easy way to get to me. Yeah. But you can find it on the website too. Okay. The website's just not as current as the Instagram. Yeah. Well, when, in, in, when we put this on YouTube, we'll put the link down below. Cool. So Steve will be good about that. And then, um, you know, people are going to, I, this is amazing stuff. I think people are going to be really drawn in. Uh, I think you're, right. you're a really cool man. You, like, you're really interesting. I can imagine like oh, just thank you. hanging out. I'd love to see the process. Yeah. Um, like I said, yeah, if you would honor me, I would bring my daughter for sure. She bring her I mean, the funny by. part is, is like I said, no coincidence. She loves butterflies. Yeah. Loves they're, art. They're, butterflies are symbols of change. You know, they have a great symbol uh, and a great meaning. They're, they started as something that's not a, beautiful and they blossom into this. Yeah. Well, caterpillars are gorgeous too, but... You know, that whole chrysalis and the change idea and symbolism is, is a really big part of my art and allegory, telling stories through symbols and butterflies are my favorite. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is a crazy a beautiful story creature. the way they, they, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. Yeah. Not that, yeah, I agree with you. Caterpillars are beautiful in their own, but before they become a caterpillar, they're not beautiful. It's yeah. like this sad. I mean, yeah. I guess one could argue that that also could be beautiful. Yeah, everything's like, beautiful. Aesthetically. Uh, the butterfly is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all agree on that one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but, you know, I'm sure I'll see you around Laguna. I'm there. We just did uh, the, the uh, Laguna Museum um, auction this past weekend. Okay. And so I had a piece in the auction from my Flower Brain series that uh, 
was part of the live auction. So the auctioneer from Bonhams come in and there's about 120 pieces in total, but only 13 are in the live auction. Okay. So I was one of those people, wow. which was a big honor. Yeah, is, so, yeah. And so yeah. and my piece sold, it went for 30% over asking, which was nice. Most of the money goes to the, to support the museum, which is a, is a nice thing. So, but it was an incredible event and uh, it was exciting to be part of a live auction. That's great. That was a sort of new for me. Yeah. One of those new things. But anyway, we're there around. I'm sure I'll see you in uh, maybe at, in, at the hotel. Yeah, for have sure. a drink. They make great cocktails there, by the way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We have the smoking one. The smoking was kind of like a Manhattan kind of thing. Okay, they, with they some fire like some dry ice or whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, they, so it's like it's like a Manhattan on a big gut rock, and then they put a uh, like a wood cap on it, and then oh. they take a torch and they and they burn oh, it. Oh, they smoke and they it smoke smoky. it. And it, it, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'll show you. But they have like uh, and was that good? They, it's tasty, yeah. Super yeah, smoky. Yeah, very smoky, yeah. yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, very cool. I know, I just had a martini. Just now, before I got here? Yeah, wow. <laughs> I love oh, that. Just this one. <laughs> the just one. one. Well, we just came from shooting uh, a tequila company that's local, this, See, this yeah. new brand that I'm actually an investor in, but uh, phenomenal stuff. And so What's we tasted- called? What's the name of the company? Otaka. Otaka. Otaka, yeah. Okay, so it's like a, a bespoke tequila, would you say? Or is it, it, it it's just it, like a- it, it's a- It's a small boutique, uh, kind of up yeah. and coming new brand. Like, yeah. Um, but all natural like craft and tequila. craft tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Cool. Stuff, I love yeah. tequila. Tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll get you a bottle. Oh, that's great. Um, you know, I don't know if you, in Canada, we call them bloody Caesars, but I think here it's just bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. The only difference is it's Clamato instead of tomato juice. Okay. Yeah. We call it Caesar. I love bloody Marys or bloody Caesars. I, I love that drink. Usually it's with vodka, but if you can make it with tequila instead of vodka and you put a pepperoni stick instead of a celery. Oh, wow. And I think it's, uh, they call it. I can't remember. A, a Cesaro or something like that. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Some Spanish. Yeah. Or, no. That's awesome. Maybe. Yeah. All right, awesome. All. Well, thanks so much. No I problem. mean, this was uh, uh, more mind blowing than I had anticipated. Like, this is such a great deep dive. Uh, super excited. Cool. And, uh, you know, we're on to the next one. Excellent. All right. Cool.